I want to thank you guys for joining me for this episode of Real News Today. I am really excited about my next guest who we connected uh, organically through LinkedIn. So this is our first time meeting one another via camera and uh, excited for the insight and everything that he has to share with us. His name is Eric and he is going to take a moment to introduce himself before we get into the interview. All right. First of all, I just want to say I'm so excited to uh, be on your show, uh, Miss Atkins. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to do it like I do my podcast. And I always start out with saying I'm Eric Wortham, behavior specialist, educator, uh, author, speaker, and disabled veteran. And uh, one of the things that I want to do is I want to inspire, I want to motivate, and I want to give strategies to help people live in the 21st century. And I don't want to help them just live. I want them to be successful. I love that. And, you know, it's so good to be intentional. I love all those words that you said, inspire, motivate. You know, that takes a different type of mindset because really that's the thing that we are challenged with the most when it comes to positive living, successful. So, what is it usually that we're doing wrong when it comes to uh, not having motivation and inspiration just in every day? Well, um, uh, for example, I work with students as a behavior specialist. I work with students that have what we call emotional behavior disorder. We call it EBD. And so they are um, aggressive. You know, uh, uh, most of them have been traumatized in, in some kind of way. And so uh, my job is to teach them uh, social skills so they can get out of my class and get back into uh, the regular classroom. And so when I first uh, started teaching in that class, because I was a history teacher, and one year we had a new principal that, that came in and um, the person that was running that class, well, before Thanksgiving, we had already had five teachers in that class. And the teacher that was currently in that class, the principal walked in and she was just in tears, you know, students all over the place doing whatever. And so she convinced me. It took a lot of convincing, by the way, because initially I said, no, I'm not going in there. You're not going to set me up like that. And so she had um, her assistant principal to keep, you know, nudging me. And then some kind of way they found some money. <laughs> Amen. And, when they start talking about the money, I say, hey, I'm gonna think about that. Mm -hmm. But once I got in the classroom, you know, I found that that was my niche. I, I see what she saw in me, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to be able to tackle that class. But the first thing that I found out is that a lot of my students came to that classroom and they were not motivated uh, to learn math and science and social studies, language arts, and simply because they just did not have the models of that, you know, kind of like me, you come from the projects, you come from um, homes where you don't have doctors and lawyers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so they were just mimicking the environment and the culture that they came out of. And so uh, they constantly complain, coach, this is too hard. Why do I have to do this? I already know what I got to do. And so I knew immediately then that, you know, us trying to keep hammering this content down their throat and they don't they're not motivated to learn it i learned quickly that i had to do something uh to motivate these kids and you know you can see why though if you're coming from an environment where you know you don't have those models of success models of um, being doctors and lawyers it's hard for you to all of a sudden get in a situation and say man i can do that right <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, so that, I totally get that Go ahead. Yeah. So I was going to say, you know, that really has a lot of similarity to um, the issues that are current in the um, landscape about, you know, Black Lives Matter, for example, you know, with people protesting and expressing their viewpoints. But a lot of it is kind of like the similar scenario of the motivation is not there based on things that they're seeing. So what would be, you know, your idea of a positive solution to 
kind of breaking the cycle, you know, of that type of mindset, either as a victim or as an oppressor, you know, in terms of moving forward. Right. And I'm glad you brought up the um, Black Lives Movement because, you know, I've been in some debates with people about the movement and, uh, you know, surely, you know, at the end of the day, I agree with the movement, but <laughs> yeah, I'm like you, we have to do something within our communities, especially the ones, you know, like from the culture that I came from, that environment, from the projects, you know, where you uh, see violence and all that stuff all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, it, you have to do something, you know, uh, to, to change that motivation that those students have. And to be honest with you, that's why, you know, I, I do a lot of different things, uh, not only in the classroom, but I started it in the classroom. I teach mindset. You know, Dr. Carol Dweck and her team had been studying uh, mindset for over 30 years. And she created a program called Brainology. And Brainology is a program that's designed to uh, teach young people how the brain works. You know, it, it is designed to teach them how intelligence and talent and things like that, how, uh, you know, how you can, uh, you know, increase those things, increase your intelligence, develop your, uh, your talent, your ability and stuff like that. So what it does is most of us, a lot of people in that environment have what we call a fixed mindset. I did too. So mm -hmm. fixed mindset individuals think that we're born with certain amount of intelligence, certain amount of abil ability, certain amount of talent, and it's not much we can do about it. And so basically when they face difficult things, you know, they, they kind of, they give up quickly because they don't see the reason in trying to overcome the challenge. Mm -hmm. And then we have on the other end growth mindset people that believe that if I learn how to embrace challenges, if I learn how to accept uh, failing as a way of learning, then I can, you know, make myself more intelligent. I can develop uh, my talent. And so those are some of the things that, you know, I'm working with. I was working with um, Henry County. Uh, I was working with Hen Henry County uh, judges, you know, juvenile judges. And this is a program that we were working on before the coronavirus thing because they, you know, they want to do something because they're tired of putting these kids in jail. You know, they want to do something to help them to come out of the situation that they're in. And so we were working on me teaching and bringing that brainology curriculum where I'm taking them from that fixed mindset to that growth mindset. And the reason that it works is because it, it um, has the components that's that young people like is engaging okay and kids now they want to be engaged they don't just want to be in the classroom while you're lecturing they want to be engaged you know so it's engaging it has a little humor and we deal with things that are relevant to their life so i have to be a person people ask me all the time why are you listen to that hip-hop because i'm listening to something that i can use to grab my students' attention, you know? So that kind of thing, that's one of the things that, that I am doing and trying to get that, you know, uh, to be uh, used more. We used it at Henry County uh, and my principal was so, I mean, she was so excited about it that she made it mandatory for the whole school. You know, so that's one of the components. Another thing that I'm trying to do with Henry County Schools, because I live in Henry County, that's why I'm Okay, starting. well, we're in Henry County together then. Oh, wow, okay. okay. Yeah, my kids yeah. go to Henry County Schools. Okay, all right. Yeah, I well, told we're, we're at home in Henry County Schools, okay? We're not going. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, you were well, one I got of the eight of them. not to go back yes, to the classroom. Eight of them are e-learning, okay? We are right. not going right. to the classroom yet. Yeah, but go right. ahead. I'm sorry. Right. So another thing that, that I do too is I teach um, drug alcohol risk reduction. Um, and I do it for the state of Georgia as well. I do, uh, I run a, a rehab program at um, uh, Rockdale County uh, Jail. 
So, you know, those are some of the things that I think are important too, because believe it or not, I've seen students in those, you know, in those communities where you have at-risk students, you know, 80% uh, of them at-risk students. I've seen kids as young as fifth grade that were, had problems with marijuana. And we know based on the research that it's affecting their brains, specifically that area in the brain where they have to make executive decisions. Right. You know, and so one of the, excuse me, one of the things that I do is I use that um, drug alcohol risk reduction program for young people as well. So I taught it at church. I did it at church the same way I did the mindset. Oh, instead of doing Sunday school, you know, um, traditional Sunday school, mm -hmm. I was doing mindset. Instead of doing Wednesday night Bible study, I was doing risk reduction, <laughs> you know. Awesome. So just kind of like uh, teaching them, you know, how these things affect their ability to reach their full potential. And I think that's what we have to do more, you know, and in and, and our uh, society, a lot of times we don't want to put invest the money that it takes to uh, do things like that. Because that was the main thing with, with Henry County, with the judges, we're trying to figure out how we're going to get these kids there because we know some of the parents can't be relied on. You know, so we were trying to figure out how we're going to do the transportation because we can't fault them for not getting here if their parents don't. Their parents, get yeah. Right, right. And so we'll be working back on that. But I think those areas that um, affect us, I even started a few years ago in the Cab County. I, I left Henry County for one year, went to the Cab County because I wanted to, you know, I do a, um, I did do a classroom management program as well for teachers. And so I want to make sure that my stuff worked, not just in Henry County, because right. sometimes people don't look at Henry County as one of those at-risk systems, mm -hmm. you know, but in, at Henry County Middle School, that was one of those schools that had those same demographics, you know, so that's why I spent the majority of my time. But I wanted to go to the cab. Mm -hmm. And then I left the cab after one year with Clayton. So I wanted to have that in my resume mm -hmm. to say that I did it, you know, at those uh, two schools. So, you know, those are some, those are some of the things that we have to deal with. And I started in the cab County, I started a parenting course. And I went to the principal because I was in these IEP meetings and man, a lot of my parents were just in tears. You know, Coach Worm, I just don't know what to do. You know, and so I asked her, I say, look, if you would allow me to, you know, do this class every Tuesday night at like, you know, six, seven o'clock, because that's when parents would be able to get here. I'll be glad to teach these parents some parenting skills for 21st century, because you have to adjust your skills. You know, this group is not like, my group, right. it's not like our group. It's not like our parents' group. This group is different. And so the things that they need are different as well. So that's what I did. I taught them some 21st century strategies uh, to help them to get their kids to do better. And it, it actually worked. You know, most of my kids, uh, one of the things that I do, I want most of my kids out of my classroom by the time they get in the eighth grade. <laughs> you know, because awesome. I do middle school. So I get them a lot of times in the sixth grade. So by the time they get in the eighth grade, I want them out of my class because the research shows us that if they go to high school, still in a class like that, they only have a 20% chance of graduating. Wow. Yeah. My students graduated at a, over an 80% clip. Amen. Yep. Amen. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, so how do you get the element of you know, you brought up a point about the transportation issue. So you have the children who are able to be transformed, so to speak, by their mindset. Right. But then they're in a household with parents that might have a fixed mindset. Right. So when you have that element where one is changing, one is not, what is, and this can really be happening for people 
not necessarily even children. You know, you have um, people right now with this mindset of this global pandemic. Right. They've been at home with their spouse or other right. family members, and one of them is growing, the other one's fixed. How do you suggest they kind of handle that difference with those mindsets? Well, one of the one of the things that I found out, and it's had to say that I had more influence over uh, most of my students than their parents did. Now, mm -hmm. part of my goal was to get parents to work with me. And I was pretty good at that because, you know, some of my strategies as an educator is I made sure that I call all of my parents within the first two weeks of school. And I didn't want to call them for bad things. Yeah, I wanted to call them to say, man, I, I'm looking so forward to working with Johnny this year. You know, I wanted to give them that positive call so I can set that uh, set that atmosphere, you know, for the rest of the year. And so by doing that and constantly developing that relationship with the parents, the parents, some of the parents were able to uh, come along as well. But by me consistently teaching mindset and that includes social skills and you know uh doing the other things that i do mindset was tuesdays uh yeah mindset was tuesdays and the social skills were thursday so by consistently doing that throughout the year i think i really had a a more positive um uh, I don't know, I, I had a more uh, positive relationship with the students than some of them had with their parents, unfortunately. So, you know, I believe, and, and many of us, you know, the reason I was able to change is because of my high school coach, <laughs> you know, uh, mm -hmm. I was just like many of them. And he, you know, he made me, he encouraged me, he made me feel like I can do things, mm -hmm. you know? So I was like, man, this guy believes in me. So it's gotta be somebody. You know, somebody that they admire, somebody that, you know, uh, get interested in them as a person, you know, not just as a teacher, but as a person, you know, developing that relationship, then you have the ability to change them, you know, mentoring, mm -hmm. you know, those kind of programs like we have in Henry County at Shiloh Baptist, they have mentors mm -hmm. that come, they come to the school. You know, and we let the students, they, they get the students go to the um, lunch, eat lunch with them and all of that kind of stuff. So, you know, things like that, they have to have that positive uh, force in their lives. And, you know, that gives them a chance to see that, you know, they can do it. And when, once they see that they can do it, a lot of them will decide to go ahead and do it. That's good. Now, so do you think a large portion of that is to be able to kind of create this environment from day one, you know, so it's like, hey, in this room, X goes on here to kind of build a world within a world, I guess. Is My first, the say. first two weeks, mm -hmm. the first two weeks of school every year is dedicated to teaching them expectations. Okay. And not only that, I use them. When we make the class rules, they're helping me make those rules. And the reason okay. I do that is because if they are the ones sitting there helping me make the rules, then they're more vested in the rules rather than me just coming here. These are the 10 classroom rules. You know, I don't do it that way. I allow the kids. I say, okay, we need to have some classroom rules now. And y'all got to help me come up with these things. You know, so that's that's what you're doing. But I set that I set that environment the first two weeks of school. That's all I'm doing. I'm not even really worried about work. You know, I'm worrying about the routine. I'm worrying about, you know, we are in the line and they know how we face forward. And if somebody's not facing forward, stop. <laughs> Why do we have to stop? <laughs> you know, and somebody had to tell me, oh, I wasn't I wasn't looking forward, coach. My bad. You know, and so that's the kind of thing. You have to do now a lot of teachers start doing that but they give up you know because they keep having to say stop 
I don't give up. <laughs> you know, we do it the whole year. And I tell kids, hey, man, we, this is how it's going to be all year. Somebody going to change, but it's not going to be me. Amen. You know, that's and so, that, <laughs> so and that's, mm -hmm. you know, that's kind of um, how it is that the hope is that we have um, more people, mentors, teachers, people that engage with the students that really uh, understand that the connection that they make with them is vital. You know, no matter what's going on at home, the connection you make with them is vital and you can make a difference. I love that. And so, you know, so how do you know how much input to give them when it comes to the rules? Because, you know, like it can be from one extreme to the other. You know, you've got some kids, they're not used to rules or they just don't acknowledge them. You know, that lack right. of respect but or see, authority. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. But that's what I'm saying. So you, mm -hmm. you all of my kids are like that because okay. remember. <laughs> They have EBD, they have emotional behavior disorder. So they're mm -hmm. already aggressive. They already come to me with those things. Mm -hmm. But that's my job is to teach them how to have, you know, appropriate relationships, you know, with teachers, with other students. That's my job is to do that. And the way that I do that is by being consistent in what I do. You know, what we do in the first two weeks, the routines that we do, the expectations that we make, the rules that we put up, it's going to be the same way every week for the whole year. Mm -hmm. And because of that consistency, mm -hmm. you know, 80% of my students graduate from high school when nationally only 20% of those students graduate. That's awesome. Well, yeah. and I mean, that's just another testament to you know, it doesn't take a lot, but it just takes being consistent right. with whatever it is that you're doing that can have an impact because, you know, you're one person. So one person, you know, really changing the mindset of these students who are encountering not just you, but other teachers and other inconsistencies outside of your classroom. Right. But right. for them to be able to handle those things, uh, that's just commendable. And, and I'm going to be honest with you, a lot of times my fear and, you know, I have to do a good job. And I, I was thankful that, you know, because the classroom I'm in, I usually have either uh, uh, two pair of pros or at least one. You know, I don't never be in there by myself. Mm -hmm. But I, I was lucky that for like nine years, I had a guy that really understood the whole uh, program and what I was trying to do. And that made it a lot easier. So. What I try to teach teachers is that it's going to be tough. The first month, month and a half is going to be tough. It is. Mm -hmm. But if you stick with it and you stay consistent with what you're teaching, see, while everybody else during the um, end of the year, the second half of the year, while all the other teachers are still pulling their hair out, mm -hmm. and I didn't have no hair to pull out anyway, but... <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't as stressed as they was because right. of the work that I put in the first month or two. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's, Makes sense. It, it does get easier if you're consistent, you know, and I mean, that's even what I teach parents. If you keep doing it, mm -hmm. and I know we don't like to keep saying the same things over and over again, but it's all right. Do it anyway. Right. <laughs> yeah. You're going to get some results. <laughs> so true. And, you know, I think the thing with parents are, you know, you don't see the results until later on. It definitely is not a sprint type of relationship. You know, I have a daughter who's 28 and now she is just now getting it. You know, she had her baby and the babies too. So now it's like, oh, I know what you were talking about. But, you know, right. so I still have other kids that are underneath her that are just not getting the memo. So right. I think if we know that, hey, this is a long term yeah. type of situation yeah. you're not going to get yeah. that reward like you do if you work a job and you know at the end of you know a quarter they're trying to give you an award you're not getting that at home as a right parent. right <laughs> right and you know um parents can use a reward system i did mm -hmm. you know um, i use a reward system i had a um, store set up in the classroom and the store was made up of things that again first day of school 
I had them to make a list of little small cheap things now that they would be willing to uh, work for and get rewards um, as a result of them working hard for. Mm -hmm. And so I made, uh, you know, I made it, um, I made it a thing for me to go and get as many of those things as I could. And I had, like I said, I had a principal that supported me. She was getting money from, you know, uh, organizations, publics and all of these places so that I can keep that store uh, filled. And so the, the, the way that I did it is we had a point system and it was based on like grades. 100 points is what you can earn by, the, by Friday. OK, mm -hmm. and so you can get 20 points every day. I had the class set up for 10 segments where they can earn two points for each segment. And if you earn at least 80, you know, because I set the bar high, you know, I want to be 80, not 70, 80. Mm -hmm. If you get at least 80 by the end of the week, then you get a chance to go in to the store and get two items. And then we do a thing like we have the highest score and the second highest score. Okay, so they get something extra. And the way that we, the way that I set it up, this is really how I get them, you know, uh, trying to work for it. The way I have it set up is I had a classroom set up in a line, you know, so when I get ready to call who made, who made it for a fun Friday, I had a music plan and then I call their name and the teachers, everybody, we just cheering them on and they get a chance to dance down oh. to the ship to the um classroom store you know <laughs> so uh you know because this this is what happened mm -hmm. the students that are new to me like the sixth graders that are coming in they don't know me a lot of them gonna come in and say they're gonna do stuff and they're gonna be getting negative points and i don't care nothing about no negative points mm -hmm. and then when they see that first friday you know they're gonna start thinking about it you know, they may not make it the next Friday either because, but they are thinking about it because they I... see the fun that we were having that they couldn't participate in. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I, you know, I tell parents that you can do similar things too that are not as expensive because kids, believe it or not, they don't want very much. They really don't. You know, it's simple things. They just like to be appreciated, you know, right. especially this group. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 And it's like, you know, they do one thing, which, you know, I always tell my kids, hey, you should have been doing that. But, you know, when they're not on that plane, we got to reward them for the improvement. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. And, it, and it's something like I say, you do it, on, you know, you do it on a weekly basis. Then I had something that I did like um, every six weeks, because in, in um, Henry County, you know, I would think it's every six weeks. You know, they'll change connection classes. We, we consider that like a quarter. So every six weeks, if you made 80, you know, at least 80 for um, all of those six weeks, you know, you, I had $10 gift cards. If you made uh, 80 every week up until we get out for Christmas break, then you get a $30 gift card. You know, so I was doing stuff like that, you know, um, making the rewards even bigger for longer yeah. periods of yeah. doing what you need to do you know mm -hmm. and and you know at first my principal she was like eric i don't like that idea that's like you know you i don't know man candy you know i don't like that and then i told i say doc you know one of the things that you do for us to one of the very first things she did when she came to that school is she wanted to make sure that teachers came every day mm -hmm. so as an incentive she started giving every month, if a teacher don't miss a day, they get a $25 gift card. And the attendance numbers went up. And that's what I remind her. I say, you do the same thing, doc. You just don't look at it like that. You know, because right. that's how you got us coming to work. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, because we all have that same mindset, you know, right. whether you're an adult or a child, it's the same thing, but it's just putting it in a way that, pushes the ball forward in terms of what it is that you're looking to change or, you know, uh, improve. So I think that's great. Now, right. so this, these have been some great tips. I hope everybody was taking notes. So what is the <laughs> best way for anybody to get a hold of you? Well, I mean, I, I have uh, my website is, is the best way. Uh, okay. www.teamwortham.com. 
-hmm. And my last name is spelled W-O-R-T-H-A-M dot org. Mm -hmm. And if you go to teamwortham.org, you know, you it'll give you uh, too much information probably. You know, I probably have too much information on that website. Uh, but you can get that one. And everything that I do is Eric Wortham. So if you uh, put in Eric Wortham Facebook, Eric Wortham YouTube, you know, you, you're going to uh, get Eric Wortham. <laughs> awesome. And yeah. uh, this has just been great. So what final words of advice would you share with the audience? Leave them with. Well, just make sure never uh, give up. Like I've had the pleasure of talking to some people in there on the verge, man, things are not going to change. Never take that mindset. Continue to go through life thinking that you are going to make an impact. That's how I am. I mean, even if it's just for a few people, just have that mindset that I am going to make a difference and I'm going to make an impact. You know, that's the best thing that that we can do as individuals because that's what I see people getting uh, frustrated with doing well, doing good things because they see a lot of people not doing. And, you know, so I try to encourage them to keep doing good things. It's still good to be a good person. It's still good to be a decent, kind-hearted person, regardless of what you see around you. It's still rewarding to stay that way. So stay that way. <laughs> Amen. Great words. Well, I hope you guys were taking notes. If not, you can always rewind this and go back and pick up those nuggets. We want to thank you guys for joining us today. This has just been very informative for parents and teachers on the ways that they could connect and have better communication and just all around improve the behavior of um, the students that are uh, that they're working with. So thank you guys so much for joining us today for this episode and we will see you all the next time. Have a great night. Thank you. <laughs>